Good morning. We are less than 100 days from the Wales summit. At the summit, we will strengthen our collective defence, improve our ability to manage crises, deepen our partnerships, and demonstrate the strength of the bond between North America and Europe. Our preparations are well underway, but we are facing a new security landscape because of Russia's illegal aggression against Ukraine. We have already taken immediate steps in a strong show of solidarity. Every single ally from both sides of the Atlantic contributes to bolstering our collective defense, including deployment of ships, aircraft, and troops. It is really all for one and one for all. We will review these steps and consider what more we need to do. The crisis has shown that the range of security threats we face is increasing and becoming more unpredictable. We still have to tackle threats such as terrorism, piracy, and cybercrime. But we also have to consider the challenge posed by Russia's attempt to redraw borders by force. So we need to make NATO fitter, faster, and more flexible. We'll do that through a readiness action plan to make sure our forces are even more responsive with the right capabilities, the right training, and the right resources. This work is already ongoing, but the crisis makes it more urgent. We will also meet with Ukraine to demonstrate our support and discuss priorities for our cooperation in light of the crisis and following the landmark presidential election. And we will meet with Georgia to assess the development of our partnership and the impact of Russia's actions in the wider region. NATO's collective defense is solid. Our commitment to our partners is strong and our message to Russia is clear. As we continue to deal with this crisis on our doorstep, we are just months away from completing our longest combat mission in Afghanistan. At the same time, we are finalizing our plan for a new mission to train, advise, and assist the Afghan forces from next year. We can only launch that mission if we have the legal framework in place. But despite the challenges, I'm increasingly confident that we will be able to launch the mission and build on the gains we have made in Afghanistan. And with that, I'm ready to take some questions. We'll start with Reuters in the middle. Um. General, could it, so Adrian Croft from Reuters, could I ask for a reaction to the announcement that's just come from the White House that President Obama is going to ask Congress for a billion dollars to uh, increase uh, U.S. military rotations in Europe, please? And can you tell us whether uh, the issue of permanent basing in Eastern Europe is on the table for ministers to, today, despite Russia saying this would violate your 1997 agreement? Thank you. Um, first of all, let me emphasize uh, that I really appreciate uh, the American leadership uh, in taking um, reassurance measures 
the United States has reacted uh, swiftly uh, after uh, Russia's illegal military actions uh, in, in Ukraine. Uh, and um, uh, I appreciate that other allies uh, have uh, followed, so we can announce that all 20 allies are now contributing to reassurance measures. But I look forward to continued uh, American leadership uh, in that uh, regard. As regards the specifics on which measures uh, we will take uh, in a long-term perspective, it's a bit too early uh, to say anything about that. Uh, we have taken immediate measures and we are now considering more long-term uh, measures to uh, reinforce um, uh, collective uh, defense, and that might include um, update of defense plans, development of new defense plans, enhanced exercises, and also appropriate deployments. But I would expect such a readiness action plan to be adopted at the summit. Hadjok from Afghanistan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary General. I'm from Afghanistan. What we will ex expect any important decisions on Afghanistan in ministerial meeting and any update on SOFA? We heard that Afghan government approved the SOFA agreement. I would expect um, the ISAF meeting tomorrow uh, to um, decide to continue planning uh, for a resolute support train advice assist mission to be established from the 1st of January uh, 2015. Of course, we will still have to continue planning in parallel for the situation uh, that we might not be able uh, to deploy uh, a training mission after 2014 in the case that the legal framework will not be in place. Uh, but as I said in my introduction, I'm increasingly confident that the legal framework will be put in place in due time uh, so that we can establish uh, the training mission from 1st of January 2015. And that will be uh, the main decision uh, to take uh, tomorrow, that we will continue planning uh, for the establishment of such a training mission. Al Jazeera. Secretary General, uh, most of the measures that you're talking about seem to be aimed at deterring future Russian action. What about Crimea? Is Crimea now permanently lost? And may I ask you quickly also, I know your focus here is on Ukraine, but Syrians are voting as you speak. What's your view of that election? Uh, first on, on uh, uh, Crimea. Um, uh, the annexation uh, of Crimea into the Russian Federation is illegal. Uh, we do not recognize it. We still consider Crimea uh, a part uh, of uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we call on Russia to return Crimea uh, to uh, Ukraine. Um, on the Syrian uh, presidential uh, election, the Syrian presidential election is a farce. Uh, it doesn't uh, fulfill international standards uh, for uh, free, fair and transparent elections. Uh, and I'm sure that no ally will recognize the outcome of these so-called elections. One last question of them. Oui, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général, mon dernier mari à Rabel, j'ai deux questions. Euh, quelles sont les prochaines étapes concernant la situation en Ukraine, surtout que les enjeux sont aussi bien militaires qu'économiques, et jusqu'où l'OTAN et ses alliés peuvent-ils résister à la pression russe um, Let me emphasize that. Uh, we are not discussing um, uh, military options. Uh, we do believe that the right way forward um, is a political and diplomatic solution uh, to the crisis. Um, a first very important step in that direction uh, would be for Russia to de-escalate the situation, first and foremost by a full withdrawal uh, of uh, uh, Russian troops uh, from the Ukrainian um, uh, borders. Um, we have seen signs of the start of such a withdrawal, but let me add that there are still 
tens of thousands of Russian troops um, along the Ukrainian uh, borders, and that massive troop presence is not uh, justified. Uh, furthermore, it would contribute to a political and peaceful solution to the problems uh, if Russia stops the support for armed gangs uh, in eastern Ukraine, armed gangs uh, that occupy uh, government buildings and, as we have seen, also take uh, OECE observers uh, hostage. And in general, it would contribute to a political solution if um, Russia uh, would live up to her international uh, obligations. So these are immediate steps uh, to be taken if we are to find a long-term sustainable solution to the crisis. Um, let me add to that, but that goes beyond NATO, of course, that is of utmost importance uh, that uh, the international community assists uh, Ukraine uh, in uh, improving uh, the economic uh, situation. Thank you very much, colleagues. We'll see you later.